James, we're practicing. Are we? Yeah. Okay then. <laughs> Let's go. Ready. <laughs> Back at it again. Race number three for the Scottish downhill. Me and James are here. We're gonna go and check it out. Let's go, James. Let's go after it. Back in June, round three of the Scottish Downhill Series took place in Inner Leithen. I was there with the Six Skills Development Team, which it was just myself and youth pinner James Wilson. Saturday was practice day and things were looking greasy. Oh, yes, I remember your bad and how you turn my First one for me, I just kind of have a little scoot down just to kind of check it out, see what conditions are like. Like this morning, it rained quite a bit, so yeah, it was kind of sketchy. We're just kind of getting a feel for what the track was going to do. Yeah, after the first one, like me, me and James were both thinking, oh, <laughs> so slippy. Drop the pressures and the tires down. Oh, that's you on 17.6. And uh, then it was just like transformative how much more grip there was. The second run, I was just like coming up to turns and just pushing the bike in and it was just hooking up. So much grippier, like you brake so much harder so then you go a lot faster. After that, I feel like I just slowly like up the speed every run until I find the kind of limit where I feel the tires just starting to slip in all the corners. And my goal by the end of the day is just to get almost to race pace on all the lines that I think I'm going to take. During practice, this young shredder was lapping outside our pits doing little stunts we thought it'd be cool to both sign one of my old number boards and stick it on his bike. He seemed pretty stoked. I'm gonna be even faster in the car park now. <laughs> Back to the riding and we were getting deep into line choice. Just having a wee scope here. That turns quite tricky. It's quite slippy. Especially this morning, thinking dodgy grass line. The wider setup on this turn should help speed up the exit. Nailed it. The next section had a very divisive line. I had a few debates with fellow elite racer Lachlan Blair on what was best. Now Lachlan, tell me. Okay. <laughs> Road crossing. I've not tried the high line yet, but there's a prime line you can do just if you just go just to the left of the rock. Straight line past the inside of the next tree into the rock. That's right. So the boys are so generous. Giving the lines away. <laughs> right, let's cut to uh, doing that line on the GoPro. I preferred my riskier but more direct line. Final turn in the hill, super off camera and drifty in here. So we're trying to make that a bit easier. And this is the main line here. Like we're thinking super wide, get right out of there. Super wide coming in. I'll follow you through it so we can get it on film. With that line sorted, practice was done. Time to clean up and get ready for Sunday. We woke to cloudy skies, but luckily no more rain forecast. We had some breakfast and coffees. <laughs> <laughs> then headed up for our final practice runs before race time. These last couple of runs allow us to finalise lines, test conditions on race day and make sure everything is sorted before racing. I'm at this funky double drop, a double step near the top of the track. They're just severe enough and close enough together that you've got to slow down a lot for them. There is a line where you can sneak around the side of the second one, but it's so close on your handlebar and your pedal. I think it might be worth the risk though. I'm going to try it.
last turn was still playing on my mind. Here's Lachlan on the inside, really fast into the turn. Here's me on the outside, I have to slow down more coming in, but I can get on the power earlier. While I played with lines, James headed up for his first race run. First place for James on run one, with the SDA races being the best of two race runs, this race was not won yet. My turn now. I got off to a shaky start, I felt tight and sketchy having lots of slips and mistakes. While I was on my run, the other elites were crossing the line and posting their times. Next up was me, so we can find a spark in the night. but I didn't appear. The rider after me and last man on the hill, Reese Wilson, came into the finish and posted a storming time over 5 seconds faster than anyone else. We'll have to head up to the top to see where I am. Oh. Had a wee bit of an incident in the first run, clipped out just in the road crossing. I was trying to clip back in and looking down. And then I just twatted my hand on a bit of fence and uh, just whipped the bars out of my hands and then I went splat right in the road in front of everyone. Usually I jump back on a bike after a crash, but I hit my head pretty hard and I needed a few moments just to compose myself and put a little plaster and a cut in my hand. I rolled down to assess my injuries and check if my head was okay. Meanwhile, James was up for his second race run. If he stayed clean, he would win it. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got up price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. A6 all the hay. I won't get involved today. Got lost in the ball and A's. I'm flipping the balls. I'm flipping the flipping the flipping the. Through that. Easy bet didn't do anything wrong. Joe Stevenson. Had a big crash. Oh, second place for James, just behind Ryan Brannan. All record, all record, I still count wins when they got it. All record, all record, I let them take advantage, I was wallet. Before my second run, I was talking with medics and my teammates about my risk of concussion. My crash from my first race run was really heavy, and in the last few years, the dangers of repeat head impacts and concussions have been really made apparent. After checking me over, we decided that there were no symptoms and I was safe to do another run. Running through it with the young influence had a lesson presence also coming to it. I've been giving yeses when I shouldn't do it. I complete the check to put them last chance. No mistakes. Let's go. I know you're losing so I put the winners and they throw the deuces. Guess I had to pivot shooting no bazookas. This run was going good. I cleaned that road section, I crashed on last run, and I was hauling. Back, Brody Platt, but get a back, contract, give me the backs. I got that on my back. You ain't that, then it's straps. What you might not know is that I decided to try a new line. That tricky last turn, I convinced myself that the inside line was faster and hitting that flat out was what was going to win me this race. Always on that bomb corner already, come on Ben! Push him back! Where am I? Has he gone down? Here comes Reese storming in to get the fastest time of the day, but what happened to me? I was I was right there. I hit my head hard. I wanted to get up, but my vision had gone dark and I just lay there. All I could think was, oh shit, what what if I've done some real damage here? I thought about Lorraine Truong, an EWS racer who suffered successive hits to the head and spent over a year recovering from horrible side effects. I also thought about why the hell did I try that inside line? Maybe I was concussed from earlier. I just lay there and let my brain reset and my vision slowly come back. I was very lucky. I suffered minor effects from the crash, like a headache and bruising. Truth be told, it was my toe that was the most painful from kicking the tree that caused me to crash. The other elites came up to check I was okay, which was rad. Captain, I've got a heavy question for you. Was it inside or outside? Inside. 
I was like, inside's got to be the boy. Yeah, we... we look a bit different. Oh no, that's just me normally though. <laughs> With that, I was helped to my feet and I finished my run. So James was second and I finished a respectable sixth. Some might say there was only six racers in the elite classes, but I'm taking it anyway. Hats off to Reese Wilson, George Kanaka and Lachlan Blair for their storming results. Concussion is no laughing matter. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, I've linked a really good article down in the description. And finally, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more, you can subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, and if you want to know how I would have finished without that crash, hit the link at the end of this vid. I'll take you to a really quick one with a bit of analysis. Cool. See you guys later. That was a long crash.